sure. This is Mary on Instagram. She says, how do you deal with issues of hypoglycemia? I also have periods of high blood sugar, then big dips of hypoglycemia. Yeah, so hypoglycemia means too low blood sugar, but she also said that she'll have periods where her blood sugar goes too high. And so we call this blood sugar dysregulation or another term, a medical term is dysglycemia, um, where you know we just have abnormal amounts of insulin and our body is just struggling to create a good balance when it comes to blood sugar. And so there's a couple of big things that we want to look at here. Um, one of them is really look, let's look at the nutrition. You know, oftentimes when we're having issues like this, there's just too much processed carbohydrates or there's foods that are triggering, uh, inflammatory reactions, right? So immune reactions, common food sensitivities, things like gluten, dairy, um, you know, processed sugar, corn, soy. We want to look at these types of things and see if those are in the diet. And then when we start to set up a good nutrition plan here, a blood sugar stabilizing nutrition plan, I always recommend try, you know, three major changes. Number one, uh, getting rid of sugar and grains. Number two is getting rid of processed fats or really refined seed oils. That's going to be your corn oil, soybean, cotton seed oil, uh, safflower oil, uh, peanut oil, corn oil. So all of those seed oils, we get rid of those and we load up with good fats. So it's going to be avocados, extra virgin olive oil, olives, um, grass-fed butter. Uh, if you're able to tolerate dairy, then grass-fed butter can be great. Uh, tallow, beef tallow can be fantastic. Coconut milk, coconut oil, those are really good healthy fats. And then the third thing is do your best to try to get grass-fed uh, animal products, grass-fed, pasture-raised animal products, because that really reduces your overall toxic load. There's a lot of herbicides, pesticides that are bioaccumulated in your grain-fed, conventionally raised animal products. So we try to go grass-fed. And then in the meals, I recommend trying to get about 30 grams of protein in each meal, right? 30 grams of protein. And then depending on how well you, you digest fat, some people don't have a gallbladder or if they consume, let's say, you know, 30, 40 grams of fat in a meal, they get their stool floats. They feel really tired. They get itchy skin. If that's you, then we cut it back, right? Maybe 15 or 20 grams. But ideally, the ideal range is somewhere between 20 to 35 or 40 grams of healthy fats in a meal, 30 to 40 grams of protein in a meal. And so when you're, when you do that, when you get the healthy fats, and then you also get the protein, that's going to create blood sugar stability. You're going to get less of an insulin rise and you're going to have more stability and you're going to have less of those hypoglycemic episodes because your blood sugar is going to stay much more stable. So to kind of summarize that, we want to make sure those macronutrients are in alignment, that we're cutting out sugars, processed foods, common food sensitivities like gluten for some individuals, dairy, particularly um, you know, dairy proteins like cheese and stuff like that. Some people really, really react poorly to that. And uh, But we're still trying to get a lot of good proteins, a lot of good healthy fats in the meal. So that's kind of the foundation of where I start. What, what comes to your mind there, Dr. B.? Yes, that is wonderful. I think that nutrition plays a very important role in regulating blood sugar. And in addition to that, one of the things that we don't speak a lot uh, often is sleep. Mm. Sleep is our reset button. Not only, you know, it, it just resets our hormones and it resets our brain and it has a lot of functions, but it's also very crucial when you want to regulate blood sugar. And it's so interesting because what you do during the day is going to affect how you're going to sleep. So they are so intricate. And so say, for example, if your blood sugar is dysregulated during the day, guess what? You're not going to sleep well. So then if, if you're not sleeping well, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have a hard time regulating your blood sugar. So it's important that we consider both. And a lot of things, you know, one of the things that hypoglycemia can cause is poor sleep as well as you know in both cases so it's very important that we take take a look at both the sleep what and what you eat during the day another thing that comes to mind is be keeping very very well hydrated a lot of times when we feel like we're hungry it's because we're dehydrated and when we feel hungry um 
because we're dehydrated, we may go and eat more food when in reality, our body's saying, hey, I'm thirsty. And so water helps us um, you know, keep that appetite under control and it also helps us clear excess uh, sugar. And another thing that is so important is exercise. I mean, exercise will help you regulate your blood sugar as well. And one of the things that is gonna help you is producing energy. So you're gonna feel like you need less food and it will help you regulate your blood sugar, right? And another thing that it, I think of is stress. And you kind of mentioned stress as you were talking about food sensitivities because food sensitivities are stressful to the body. And so whenever we have stress, we cause our blood sugar to spike or to be sometimes steadily high. So another thing, another strategy is to manage your stress. And so that's what I think about, about regulating blood sugar. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of people will ask me, well, if I have regular episodes of hypoglycemia, should I be doing intermittent fasting? And what I would say is in the beginning, no, but our goal is to get you to the point where you're metabolically flexible enough to be able to do that and get the great benefits that come with intermittent fasting. So in the beginning, what we'll start with is, you know, you wake up in the morning, you hydrate well, like Dr. B was saying, I always recommend drinking, you know, eight to 16 ounces of water before you put anything in your, you know, before you eat anything. So you hydrate well, you could also take a little bit of salt. So a lot of times people that struggle with hypoglycemia also can be a little electrolyte deficient and they actually will need a little bit more salts and that can help stabilize your adrenals a little bit more effectively as well. So a little bit of salt on your tongue, drink your water, hydrate well, and then roughly 30 to 30 minutes to an hour after you wake up, have a high protein, high fat breakfast like I was talking about. Um, so eggs can be good if you're able to tolerate eggs or a good protein shake, for example, with maybe coconut milk and um, like a really good quality protein powder. You could do something along those lines. Um, and then, you know, roughly four to five hours later. So if you get enough protein, enough fat, it should be able to stabilize your blood sugar for roughly four to five hours. However, if somehow, you know, between meals, even when you're staying hydrated, which is typically the issue, a lot of times people will start having cravings or they'll start getting dizzy or having headaches, but they're really dehydrated between in, in between meals. As long as you're staying hydrated, you should be satiated for four to five hours. If for some reason you start noticing symptoms of hypoglycemia, like um, headaches, nausea, cravings, um, anger, just inability to control your emotions, then I would recommend eating a little bit earlier, right? So eating in three hours, let's say, again, another high protein, high healthy fat meal. If you're doing that, let's say every three to four hours, right? Consuming or, or even up to five hours, uh, if you do that over the course of about a week, you should be able to get really good blood sugar stability and actually start creating more metabolic flexibility where you're able to go a little bit longer between meals, right? So that is really the key is starting out by cutting down the carbs, cutting down bad foods, really focusing in on the protein, the fats, the healthy lifestyle stuff that you talked about, Dr. B, keeping the stress under control, sleep, right? Getting all of those things dialed in getting enough electrolytes, sometimes magnesium, there's magnesium deficiencies that are often associated with this. That's usually one of the first supplements that I will give somebody that's really struggling with a lot of blood sugar issues like this. Um, but getting all of that in balance, uh, after about a week, most people notice they're not having hypoglycemia anymore. And now they're able to extend the period of time between meals. So they may do a breakfast at 7 a.m. and they may be able to go you know, until 12 or one o'clock uh, and not feel hungry, right? And then break their, you know, little fast there, consume a good meal, and then be able to go to five, six o'clock. 